Hello again. This is Peter Coffeen, and I'm with you as a member of Norfolk Artists and Friends, an organization of professional artists living and working in the Norfolk area. Our membership also includes friends from New Hartford and Sheffield, Massachusetts. Since the pandemic forced the cancellation of our usual August exhibition, the historic and spacious Norfolk Library has graciously invited us to hold a series of exhibitions with social distancing respected. This is the third edition of our 2020 series running through November and December and includes guest artists from West Cornwall, Sharon, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So let's go inside and have a look at the work of 23 artists and hear a bit about each work in the words of the artists themselves. Our first work is by Susanna Anderson. It's a 48 by 30 acrylic and shellac on reclaimed Luan and it's called Iris Photobomb. Inspired by battered Luan and unbridled Iris energy, Susanna questions the conventional expectations of completion and of boundaries. Is it breaking up or breaking free? Next, we have a work by Hilary Van Wright titled Dedicated to You a 30 by 40 inch work with pastel, glitter, and acrylic on paper, about which Hillary says, what you've suffered has made you beautiful. I dedicate this piece to you. Through all difficulties, may you continue to shine and find joy. Number three is an untitled work by John Riedemann. It's a 22 by 16 piece about which John comments, have we met? You look familiar. Hmm. Madeline Falk is showing a 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch oil panel titled Ranunculus Study. Madeline quotes Georgia O'Keeffe. When you take a flower in your hand and really look, it's your world for a moment. I want to give that world to someone else. Most people have no time to look at a flower. I want them to see it whether they want to or not. Next is New Beginnings, a 21 by 13 inch watercolor by Pamela Arnois, about which Pamela says, a fundamental component of my art is an interest in connections. My intent is to provoke a sense of the deeper, elemental side of our shared planet. Work number six is an oil painting by Edward Colt titled Taekwondo. Edward says, Taekwondo is a painting of my son. I paint people and animals that I know. Here's a work by one of our guest artists, Marilyn McGregor. It is a 12 by 16 ink drawing, archival, digital color print, which Marilyn has titled Paris Café, Après Midi. She says, my work begins with drawings from my travel sketchbooks, with an emphasis on the life, energy, and spirit of each special place. Next is a 16 by 20 oil painting by Jean Grasmere called White Tails, Winchester Lake. Jean tells us the deer appeared in the snow and then they were suddenly gone. This painting was done from the memory of that moment. Number nine is by Laura Lasker. It is a 12 by 16 acrylic painting of a Provincetown Harbor sunset, which is its title. Laura tells us that mist rising from the Provincetown Harbor combines with sunset tones, 
creating grist for my inspiration mill. Summer on the Cape isn't complete without a day in P-Town. Here is a 16 by 20 photograph by Babs Perkins, which she has titled, Moving Landscape, Donegal One. This is a photograph of a place, says Babs, but technique eliminates recognition. Rather than the inclination to say, I know that place, it focuses on mood and background. Next, also a photograph, is by Bruce Frisch. It's a 12 and a half by 14 and is called Haystack plus Barn, about which Bruce tells us that in using a long lens, in this case 600 millimeters plus a doubler, makes things much closer than they are, including making words on distant signs legible. This is an 18 by 24 oil on canvas by Harvey Kimmelman, which is titled Autumn Afternoon on Mill Pond. To Harvey, painting is an enchantment, a magical spell capturing what one feels when painting light, color, atmosphere, not what one actually sees. Ronald J. Sloan is presenting a 26 and a half by 32 and a quarter acrylic on canvas panel, which he calls the time we thought was ours. Ronald says, many times I dream of running back to the land of my youth, but alas, the entrance is always locked. Ain't it so? Number 14 is another of our guest artists, Lillian D. Woodworth, who is showing a 24 by 24 inch oil on canvas titled Untitled. Hmm. Lillian tells us that the organic world abounds, but it is the energy of color and line that guides my translation in oil paint. Next is Tom Hloss, exhibiting another of his festive collages. It's a 13 by 13 and is titled Tapestry. For Tom, flowers and patterns evoke memories of family gardens. Happy times for me. May this painting bring you joy at a time it's most needed. Here's an acrylic painting, 13 by 13, by Turi Rostet. She calls it open wide, or she says we could say eyes wide open. Portrait of My Mother by Karen Linden is a mixed media work, 24 by 36. Karen tells us that because of my interest in portraiture, I was fascinated by a workshop introducing a new technique called skins, adding an expanded dimension to character portraits. Jewelry maker Janet K. Marks shows us a hand-wrought necklace combining sterling silver with large jasper stones, which Janet says has been known as the supreme nurturer since biblical times for their healing and their beauty. Here they're combined with a hand-wrought sterling chain of adjustable length. Number 19 is a 9 by 14, 35 millimeter film print called Barn on Mill Pond Number 1 by Anita Holmes. 
The red barn on Mill Pond is an iconic and much photographed Norfolk landmark, says Anita. But I believe this pond side view of it is unique. This large 36 by 36 inch work is an acrylic on canvas by Ruth Ann Olson, titled Primary Sky. Ruth tells us that Primary Sky is from my Look Up series, inspired by the spectacle that is sky. It offers us a super grand exhibition every day. Remember, look up. Next is a monotype collage, 18 by 24 by Susan Rood, called Out of Touch. We've all been out of touch, says Susan, and six feet apart. No hugging, no smiles. Social media tries to connect us, does it? Here is a painting, oil on canvas, 23 by 30, by another of our guest artists, Robert Andrew Parker. It's titled Machapuchare. Robert tells us that Machapuchare is Nepalese for fishtail. This picture was painted after a trek in the north central Himalaya, early 1980s. Difficult terrain, beautiful views. Our final work in this third and final edition of Norfolk Artists and Friends Exhibitions at the Norfolk Library is this photograph by your narrator. Its title is Still Life with Pear Shape. This is a gicle print on Arches watercolor paper, attempting here to create a quiet, contemplative mood. I choose the objects in my still lifes based on shape, color, surface texture, volume, and above all, light. We hope you've enjoyed our exhibitions at the Norfolk Library. We plan to return to our regular summer schedule on the Battelle Steckel Estate next August. 2021 will be the 14th year that Norfolk Artists and Friends has been sponsored by the Norfolk Chamber Music Festival, and we will be part of next summer's Weekend in Norfolk, WIN. Meanwhile, we wish you a peaceful and safe holiday season. <laughs>